In this video, I'm going to share with you the secrets to gaining mass while following a calisthenics routine. And in fact, the advice I'm about to give you is so good that I'm thoroughly convinced that it will work for all experienced levels. Whether you're a novice lifter and even an advanced lifter, you can gain mass with calisthenics if you follow the right system. So let's break this down. The first secret to gaining mass would have to be the usage of volume. You see, there are far too many guys who are narrow-minded in their way of thinking, in their way of training. They think that they must do three sets of eight to 12 reps to gain mass. Anything that is higher in sets, anything that is higher in reps, is building endurance, it's not gonna build muscle mass. Well, when talking about calisthenics, this is the worst thing that you could possibly do because calisthenics is really sub-maximal weight. That is why you can do hundreds of push-ups, no problem, okay? Even when you use a harder variation, you can still do a lot of repetitions. It's not truly, heavy weight. It is the way that you distribute your body through leverages and it ends up becoming like 65% of your one rep max if we quantify it in weight training terms. So you're not lifting that heavy, therefore you have to compensate by increasing the volume. If you're just going to do a three sets of 8 to 12 on a, on a pull up or something, you're not going to gain any mass from doing that. So how about we get a little bit spicy? How about we make our training a little bit more intense? How about you try this next time you go do that calisthenics workout? 10 sets of 10 chin ups. Ever tried that? 10 sets of 10, I can pretty much guarantee you, even if you're strong or weighted calisthenics, you try doing 10 by 10 chin-ups with uh, 30 to 60 second rest intervals, uh, you're gonna have trouble doing that shit. I can promise you that. I don't care if you're doing 135 on the weighted chin. If I make you do 10 sets of 10 regular pull-ups with 30 to 60 second rest intervals, the volume is gonna bury you to the ground. Here's another variation. Try going in, do five sets of 10 chin-ups, five sets of 10 neutral pull-up, then five sets of 10 wide grip pull-up. You tell me how your back feel. You tell me how your biceps feel after doing that. I can pretty much promise you that anybody who does weighted calisthenics is going to have trouble doing this. I don't care how strong you are. The fact is, it's sub-maximal weight and you're compensating by increasing the volume. We do the same thing in lifting weights. When I lift, I got my intensity day and my volume day. And my volume day, I'm lifting like 45, 65% of my one rep max. So you're doing the same thing with calisthenics. It's sub-maximal weight, therefore you must increase the volume. And the best way of doing this is high sets, high reps, low rest intervals. Same thing for your push-ups. Why don't you try doing sets of 50? Five sets of 50 uh, diamond, five sets of 50 regular, five sets of 50 off an incline. You see what I'm saying? Increasing the volume is hands down the best thing you could do to make your training more intense if you don't plan on using weights. If you don't plan on using weights, you have to go beyond the basics of just doing three sets of eight to 12. Three sets of eight to 12 is absolutely not gonna cut it if you're trying to get massive while falling calisthenics. You need higher reps, higher sets, low rest intervals. Bottom line, train like a bodybuilder, think like a bodybuilder, and you can start developing like one. The second secret of calisthenics is by using leverages in your favor. You see, you can make push-ups a lot more difficult if you just lean forward a little bit. If you turn into like a planche push-up where you just lean your body all the way forward and your elbows are kind of close to your hips, uh, you'll see how difficult it becomes. If you were able to do 100 repetitions of a classic push-up, with the planche push-up, you might only be able to do like uh, 10, 20 reps. It's that more difficult. So just like bodybuilders are gonna do the same thing when talking about like tricep pushdowns, they're gonna have their elbows in front of their body, um, which makes it more like tricep focus. You can do the same thing when talking about calisthenics. In fact, you can even isolate your triceps in a calisthenics fashion, such as doing the, the tricep extension off that little uh, pole thing, right? You can easily do those and to increase the resistance, you just uh, put your legs more back and you don't elevate your ass as much. These are some of the examples that you could use to make the exercise more difficult. Same thing for your dips. Instead of leaning all the way forward and putting all that pressure on the chest and shoulders, you can easily make your body more bright. And now it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So these are examples of making exercises a lot more difficult with calisthenics. You don't actually have to put on weight necessarily. You just gotta make the exercise more difficult. When you combine a hard exercise with high volume, that's when the mass comes into play. Think about it for a second. Imagine you're doing the hardest dip variation possible, the hardest push-up variation possible, but you're doing that for high reps. Imagine doing planche push-up, five sets of 50. Could you imagine what that will do to your muscle gains? It's all about the leverages. Bodybuilders have known this for years. That's why a lot of them, they're gonna say, don't focus on the weight. It's not that they're weak. It's just that they're using leverages in their favor. Same thing when we talk about a sledgehammer. If you grab a sledgehammer by the front, right, close to the point at which you strike, it's gonna be a lot easier than if you grab onto the edge. When you grab onto the edge, there's gonna be a large moment arm, which makes something like an eight pound uh, sledgehammer feel much heavier. So that is the secret to doing calisthenics successfully. You must combine volume and difficult leverages. And the same thing will apply to gymnastic rings, by the way, which is something that I would highly encourage you to purchase. Get some gymnastic rings, it's gonna change the game forever. All of a sudden, all your pull-ups, all your dips, everything becomes difficult in leverages. There's a stabilization factor, uh, you can do a lot of new movements. It becomes a whole different ballgame. And that is why 
A lot of these dudes who excel at gymnastic rings, you make them do weighted calisthenics for the first time, and they're beasts. They got a strong weighted dip, strong weighted chin up almost every single time you see this, like without exception. It has to do with leverages. The more difficult you can make an exercise, you don't actually have to increase weight. You can just make the leverages so hard that it feels like you're doing more weight. You see what I'm saying? Third secret is frequency. You see, with calisthenics, you can recover fairly easily because it's only your body weight after all. And uh, it's not something that you actually need a lot of rest for. You know, if you train like, if you do a typical bodybuilding bro split at the gym, uh, you're gonna need a lot of time to recover. But with calisthenics, it's mainly full body. It's mainly, uh, you're doing your pull-ups, your push-ups, your dips, and your, your legs at the same time. So it's actually something that you could do very frequently. You can go in every 48 hours and maximize your gains. You're not gonna have recovery problems when following calisthenics routine. Uh, so that said, you can take advantage of one of the greatest uh, muscle building variables, which is frequency. The more frequency you got, the faster your strength is gonna progress, the more protein synthesis you, you got, and the bigger your muscle is gonna get overall. So you should be doing a high frequency calisthenics routine. I recommend you go every 48 hours. Go every 48 hours, you know, and make sure that you're getting that frequency in because it's gonna make you a lot stronger, a lot bigger, faster than if you were to just do some bro split setup. Don't try to copy bodybuilders. Don't just go in one day and say, okay, this day is gonna be exclusively push-ups. And then next day, okay, I'm just gonna do pull-ups. Why should you go through that? Uh, combine everything in one session. Now you can get a nice day off. Now you can train every other day. Or you know what, here's another option. You can actually use Bulgarian light with uh, calisthenics. So you can go in every single day and, and do a pull-up. You know, a pull-up every single day. Or grease in the groove. You can do grease in the groove, which is uh, every time you pass by your door, for example, you gotta pull a bar, now you can do several repetitions. Or in the morning, every morning you do 100 push-ups, and then every single day you increase that, like 110, 120, 130, etc. you know? So frequency is extremely important. Uh, and with calisthenics, because it is so good on recovery, you are able to train like very, very frequently. You can do it every other day, every day. It just depends on how you structure your volume and intensity. So make use of frequency. Don't be working out your muscles once a week. Try to get in there as many times as possible. The next secret to gaining mass while following calisthenics is by modifying your diet. You see a lot of guys who run it, they're just eating like regular average Joes. They're not changing anything nutrition-wise. Uh, they're just doing body weight training, they're eating normally, and typically these dudes will get very cut because uh, calisthenics tends to do that, you know? So you'll end up with a guy who's rather skinny, maybe 140 pounds, but he could do all these cool moves, all these cool tricks. And it's very common to see this. Guys who are pretty good, but they're not big whatsoever. What is the reason behind this? The non-calorie surplus. You see, when you're trying to gain mass while following a weight training program, uh, you're gonna either be in a maintenance or in a surplus phase, but typically speaking, a surplus is most optimal. Now, when talking about calisthenics, a surplus becomes even more important because you're always using the same body weight. So if you can gain weight on top of what you already have, that is an automatic way of increasing the resistance. You'd be very surprised. Just adding 10 pounds over your body weight uh, can make a massive difference. Think about what 10 pounds does to all the volume that you might be doing. Imagine you're doing 10 sets of 10, right? Well, that means every other rep. That means every rep you're doing 10 pounds extra, you know? So after uh, 10 reps, that's 100 pounds extra in a set. You can see how the workload adds up, right? When you start putting on fat, that is one of the greatest secrets you can do. All these guys who you see, they're getting big with calisthenics, it's because they're bulking. They're actually bulking. They go through bulk periods, they go through cutting periods. This is a very good way of gaining mass. Or they're gonna, they're gonna recomp. They're not gonna be in a deficit year round because it doesn't make sense to do that. You wanna put on a lot of muscle, you gotta eat to get big, simple as that. So don't try to be in a calorie deficit, don't try to get Mr. Shredded. All these guys who you see are so, who are stupid shredded, uh, most of them are not big. And the ones who are big is because they did a bulking cycle before that. So I would highly encourage you that if you're trying to gain mass while following calisthenics, be in a calorie surplus. Just like a powerlifter or bodybuilder would enter a bulk to gain mass, you should do the same exact thing if you're doing calisthenics. The next secret to gaining mass while following calisthenics is by actually using weights. Yeah, I kind of saved this one towards the end because a lot of guys don't want to hear this, but it's the God honest truth. Um, weights is one of the best things you could do with calisthenics, and in my honest opinion, you'd be foolish not to use it. Uh, because at some point, you're just gonna, you're gonna have to just make the exercise more difficult through leverages, and then you become limited by stability rather than muscular strength, in my honest opinion anyway, you know? Or some of the progressions become unfeasible. Like you end up doing like one-arm chin-ups, and now you gotta do several repetitions of that, which makes no logical sense. It would be just smarter to do a weighted chin-up. So it's about feasibility. It's about like easy progressive overload. You can track exactly what you're doing. It just makes common sense to use weights. And what I have observed personally is that all the biggest guys who run calisthenics programs, uh, they do weighted variations. They do weighted chin-ups, they do weighted dips. I mean, why would you not do this? You can easily get yourself a dipping belt. It does not cost a lot of money. Maybe $30, you know, you can get some weights in there too. You can even hang a fucking sandbag off your belt. You know, you can use people for weights. But 
have some sort of progression that is just that is beyond leverages and volume. Because the, although I really preach leverages and volume, it's not going to cut it. If you want to really maximize your size, you have to do weights. And on top of that, the weights will be an integral part of doing volume work. Because let's say you do 10 sets of 10 uh, chin up, right? You mastered that. It's easy to do. Well, how about you try doing that with a five pound weight attached to your body? Next thing you know, a 10 pound weight. Next thing, 15 pound. Next thing, 45 pounds. Could you imagine what that's going to do to you? Doing 10 sets of 10 with a 45 pound strapped to your waist. It's going to gain mass. You're going to gain some real quality mass by doing that. Like, I just, I don't understand the elitist mentality of, oh, fuck weights. I'm not going to do it because I'm, I'm a calisthenics athlete. To me, that's dogmatic crap that has no place in fitness. If you want to get big, if you actually want to get big, why don't you use the tools that are available for you? Just put on some fucking weights. Do weighted gymnastic training, do weighted calisthenics, and of course, do the volume and do the leverages at the same time. That is the complete package, not just doing park workouts. Bring some form of resistance. Bring a school bag, put a sandbag inside of it, just mix it with weights. Trust me, you're not gonna regret it. Once you're dipping like four or five plates of reps, your chest, shoulders, and tries are gonna be much, much bigger than if you just did regular dips. Same thing for your chins. If you're doing three plates for reps, you're gonna have a really good back, really good biceps. You don't have to do uh, one-arm chin-ups and all these unfeasible variations that all, a lot of these uh, skinny guys have to pre. Then as a final bonus tip, I'd like to talk about periodization. You see, when discussing weight training, it's very clear that strength and conditioning professionals will have their athletes use periodization, which is a fancy way of saying the management of volume and intensity or just training programming as a whole, you know? So if we do it in weight training, why not apply it to calisthenics? I mean, different athletes do it, rugby players, football players, all these guys use periodization. You know, even boxers, even combat athletes as a whole use periodization. So why do calisthenics guys want to not do it? Like in my honest opinion, you should periodize your training. You could do linear, you could do undulating, you could do concurrent, but like do something. Don't just go in and, okay, I'm gonna just do volume, 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 volume. Do volume and intensity. Like I said before, mix the weights and mix the volume. I think if you do both these things, right, then you rotate exercise at the same time, you're gonna have less plateaus this way and your training's gonna be a lot more fun. It's gonna be more fun than just going to the, uh, going to the park and saying, all right, <clears throat> I'm just gonna do some, uh, pu some push-ups now, some dips, some pull-ups, and uh, I'll just put in some hard work. No, no, fuck hard work exclusively. Let's go with the science as well. Let's mix in hard work and experience with exercise science. So I'd recommend that if you're gonna do calisthenics, you might as well periodize your training. You might as well have a day where it's lighter, a day where it's heavier, a day where it's more voluminous, you know, for different cycles that you go through. Like you go through a volume phase, an intensity phase. You might as well do these things. Don't just go in and freestyle it. Like if, you don't free, like if you're just freestyling it, you don't got a plan. It's much more intelligent to just include different types of uh, sessions, you know? Periodize your training. So that said, that's all I really got to say about calisthenics and building mass. I think that um, I gave you the secrets here. I exposed the real truth, exactly what you need to hear to get big from doing it. I'm thoroughly convinced that anybody who follows uh, this advice, including myself, will get bigger muscles. So I hope this video helps you out. Give me your feedback down below, and I'll talk to you all next time. Fuck you, plane! Fuck. Holy fuck, there's a wasp right under me, man. That's scary shit. And you see that? There's a wasp right, right underneath me, and there's a plane right above. Wasp and plane combination. I mean, by the way, more fucking planes! Yeah! There's planes everywhere! Fuck! And there was a wasp on my fucking feet. You hear that? Hear the planes, bitches? I'm out of here.